Okay, so today we are on day three of unit nine. We're cruising right along. This will really be most of the new material. We'll still learn a little bit in day four, but this will be the bulk of the new material today. So like I said, like I've been saying for the whole unit now, this unit's gonna be a short unit. There won't be all too much as far as days go, length goes. It's only a four day unit when lessons are concerned. We're on day three. So after today, we'll be three quarters of the way done. Anyways, yesterday we looked at permutations. And if you remember, that means order mattered. If you were president, that was different than you were getting than you being the vice president. Order mattered. A combination is an arrangement of objects in which order does not matter. So combinations, order does not matter. Whether you get picked first, second, third, it doesn't matter. You got picked. That's a combination. To find the number of combinations of n objects taken r at a time, we first find the permutation of n objects taken r at a time, and then divide it by the number of arrangements containing the same elements which is R factorial. So in symbols, you'll notice that the top is just a permutation and we divide by R factorial. This is a, this equation right here gives us a combination of N objects taken R at a time. And it's denoted by NCR. Combination, C. Permutation, P. So we're, we're still choosing from N objects. We're picking R of them. If you notice, this part right here is just your permutation formula that you learned yesterday. Now, chances are you didn't learn it. You learned how to punch it in the calculator. But still, this is our permutation formula. And then we divide by R factorial. So that part's permutation, then we divide by R factorial. That's the only difference. On the calculator, you'll hit menu, and then find, so menu, probability, and then combination. That's all we do, menu, probability, combination. How that looks, we got a menu. Well, first you gotta go to the scratch pad. So calculate, menu, probability, which is option five. Ah, hang on, back, let's get Option five, escape, escape. Option five, probability. And today we're doing combinations. So that would be three. Menu five, three. That gets you your combination. Notice it says NCR. So the syntax in the calculator is the same. If we have NCR, out here with our blanks. This is how you'd have to type it in the calculator. This first blank right here is your N. So how many you're picking from? The second blank is your R. Okay, so let's look at the first example. A student the student council members have selected 10 students to choose from to fill the positions of a four-person committee. 
notice the difference here. Now we're dealing with a four person committee. We're not naming vice president, president, all that stuff like we did yesterday. We just need a committee. Each student can only fill one position on the committee. How many different outcomes are possible? So since we're doing a committee, there's two things to note here. First thing, order does not matter. It's a committee. Who cares the order you get picked in? Order does not matter. You're picked. That's all. That's all that matters. And then the second thing is it is without replacement. When they only say that you can fill one position, that means without replacement. You can't have one person in two positions. So these two right here tell you that it's a combination. Okay, so let's look. We have this four person committee. One, two, three, four. Now, how many people can you pick to fill the first position? There's 10 people to pick from. You pick one person, okay, how many are left? Nine to pick from. Okay, now you pick two people. That leaves us with eight and seven. So, so far you may be thinking this is yesterday's notes all over again. Here's the new material. So if we did it this way, we would get a permutation, order mattered. But we don't want that. So we're going to have to divide this by four factorial. If you did that, that would get you 210 different outcomes. Two hundred and ten different outcomes. Now, another way, the easiest way probably is to do this on the calculator. So let's see, how many are we picking from? So I'm going to change colors here. And we're going to do this on the calculator. How many are we picking from? Well, there's ten students. So n is ten. How many are we picking? That's our R. We're picking four. So in the calculator, we would say NCR 10 comma four and see what that gives us. So let me bring up the calculator. I'm gonna to try to move it around to where you can see it. I don't know that it'll be possible though. Maybe. There we go. You can see that. Okay. So delete this out. Delete, delete, delete. Okay. Let's do. We're going to. We need to get a combination. So menu five, three. There's our combination. We're going to put in a 10, a comma, which remember the comma is down by your O on the keyboard, and then a four. In our. There we go. There's our 210 number right there. Same thing we got when we did it the long way. 210. Done. That matches what we got. So we know that's the right answer. Okay, so James is having a birthday party next week. His parents told him he could invite five of his friends to join him at a theme park of his choosing. Let's say they're going to Six Flags in Dallas. Six Flags Fiesta, Texas in Dallas. Five of his 20 friends get to join. 
He's going to choose them at random. He can't pick. Like, oh, I like Bob. So Bob's going to get to go. And Susie, she'll get to go. And he can't decide. So he's just going to throw them all in the hat and draw five of them randomly. How many different outcomes are possible? Well, let's see. First, we have to check, does order matter? Does it matter the order his friends get picked? No. So let's make note of that. Let's make a little note here. Order does not matter. Okay, what else? Uh, well, can one friend take up two seats? Like, can one friend count for two? No. So we're gonna, the term for that is without replacement. He's not gonna pick Bob and then be able to pick Bob again. Once Bob goes, he goes. So these two together tell us that this is a combination. So let's see, how many is he picking from? How many is he picking from? He's got 20 friends and how many does he pick? He picks five of them. So if we did this in the calculator, we could say NCR 20 comma five. And let's see what that gets us. So let's go here, menu five, three to get combination. There's 20 for our N, five for the R, 15,504. So 15,504 different outcomes. Now, if you didn't want to use the calculator, you're like, wait a minute, let's do this by hand. Well, there's five people going, right? So draw five blanks. One, two, three, four, five. For the first one, he can pick from 20. Then he only has 19, then 18, then 17, then 16. Multiply all these together. But then you've got to go back and divide by five factorial. That would still get you 15,504. I bet y'all use the calculator. That's going to be the easiest, just using your calculator to do this. Use your calculator. That's what it's there for. So part B, what's the probability that he chooses the friends Bob, Bo, Bill, Byron, and Bruce? B, 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 B. That's why I feel like I'm sitting there. Bu, 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 bu. Anyways. Probability he picks Bob, Bo, Bill, Byron, and Bruce. Well, let's see. How many outcomes is this? If he picks these, how many outcomes is that? This is only one outcome. So the probability would be equal to one, the one he wants, over 15,504. Which if we did that, in the calculator, one divided by 15,504. 
0.000064. That's the probability as a decimal. If you just really wanted to, you could put it as a percent. But I at least want you to put it as a decimal. That's a probability that of his 20 friends, those are the exact five he picks. Okay, let's look at the back now. So three, if three points are randomly chosen from the named, those named on the rectangle, what's the probability that they all lie on the same line segment? That they're all on the same line segment. Well, first, we have to figure out how many points are there. How many points are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's eight points total. So n is equal to eight. How many are we choosing? We're choosing three points. So r is equal to three. Now we have to figure out, is this a combination or is it permutation? So let's think of this picture. Does it matter if I pick A, H, and B? Or if I turn around and say, oh, I don't like that order. I want to go H, A, B. Does the order matter? No, I still pick the same three points. So order does not matter. We need to note that order does not matter. And can I pick a point twice? Can I pick A two times? No, I want to pick three points. How can I pick three points if I pick A twice? So we're doing it without replacement. Since we're doing these two things, that means this is a combination. It's a combo. Okay, so let's just keep this as simple as possible. This is a combination. We can do it in the calculator. NCR 8 comma 3. Oh, menu 5, 3. And do an 8, a comma, and then a 3. And let's see. They tell us that's 56. Okay, fair enough. So there's 56 possible. Now, what does it ask us? What's the probability they lie on the same line? Well, how many ways can I do it on the same line? Let's see. There's one. Two, three, there's four favorable ways. So 56 possible, four favorable. That's how many we want to happen. So the probability is four out of 56 which reduces to one over 14. Now as a decimal, let's see, one divided by 14. 
That's about 0.0714. Let's just go with that. 0 0.0714. That's our probability. Or, of course, if you wanted to do it as a percent, you could say 7.14 percent. Okay, example four. The Lalo Texas was the first Texas in-house drawing game that started in 1992. There's gonna be 54 balls that each have one number on it from one to 54. The machine chooses six balls randomly from the 54 available balls. The order in which the numbers were chosen does not matter. What's the probability of winning the Lotto Texas if you only buy one ticket? Oof, okay. Let's see here. Well, when they draw for the Lotto, can they draw the same number twice? Aside from like a bonus ball or anything like that, just the main numbers. Can they draw it twice? No. Since they can't draw it twice, that means that there's no, they're drawing without replacement. So let's make note of that. We draw without replacement. I'm not going to say draw without replacement. They're not putting the balls back in there. Now, does the order matter? Let's say you're wanting to win the jackpot on the lotto. Does the order matter when they're drawn? No. So order does not matter. These two together tell you that this is a Combination. Okay, so let's look how many, we know it's a combination. How many can they pick from? There's 54 balls, so N is 54. How many are they picking? Does the machine will choose six numbered balls. So R is six. That means we can do a combination of 54 or we choose six. Now let's put that in the calculator. You can see it kind of right below my screen still. So menu probability, combination. We're going to do 54 comma 6, and that's going to give us a really big number. That really big number is 25,827,000 165. That's the number of ways they could draw the six lotto balls. Now let's say you just bought one ticket. How many ways then do you want them to draw it if you just bought one ticket? All you care about is your way. You don't want someone else to win. You only want to win. So the probability that you win would be one over 25 million, 
827,165. Which, if we put that as a decimal, it's going to be a big old decimal, a nasty one too. Yeah, so that's as a decimal, this will be 0 0.123456, and then I think there's my three. Yep, 387. That's the decimal probability, which that's not going to tell you much unless you put it as a percent. So we move our decimal to the right two. It's going to be point zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, three, eight, seven. That's your percent chance of winning. That's a pretty darn slim chance. And just a little bit of trivial knowledge. Didn't apply to this problem per se, but in life, on the lottery ball, any lottery, tech, the Lotto Texas, the Powerball, the Mega Millions, you may hear an urban legend that, oh, the more people that play, the more your chance of winning or something. No. There's still this. The only way you have a better chance of winning is if you buy more tickets. One ticket gives you the same chance of winning every single drawing. Whether someone's won it in the past or not, each drawing is random. Okay, so let's review permutations, what we did yesterday for a second. First one, how many four digit numbers greater than 5,000 can be made using the digits three, four, five, and six if each of the four digits must be used? So the only numbers we can use to make our number here is three, four, five, and six. And we want a four digit number. So I'm going to put four blanks here. Okay, we have to be greater than 5,000. So if we're greater than 5,000 and our only options are three, four, five, and six, what does that mean our first digit has to be? Either a five or a six. We could only have a five or a six here. So how many options do we have for that first digit? Two. Now let's say I pick a six to start my number. Then that means since it says I have to use every digit, I'm left with a three a four or a five. I can't use six again because I already picked it. So how many options do I have left? There's three options. Okay, let's just suppose I pick a three. Well, how many options does it leave me with? A four or a five left. So there, we're back down to two options again. Let's say I pick a five. So this last one, that would mean it would have to be a four, which means we only have one option. So two times three, times two times one gives you how many total numbers you can make, which is four, or sorry, not four, 12. We can only make 12 numbers with this criteria.
That one you had to think a little bit. You couldn't just jump into it and go. You had to think. Okay, now for the next one. How many ways can letters be letters in the word successes be arranged? Keep in mind here, this is the one that has the repeats. Because how many times does S repeat in the word successes? Well, we have S, U, C, C, E, S, S, E, S. So I have four S's. I had to account for those. I'm gonna over here say repeats. We're gonna have four S's. Do we have anything else that could repeat? Yep, there's two C's. Oh. You can say there's two C's. What else? And then two E's. There's only one U, so we we don't have to worry about that. But there's four S's, two C's, two E's. How many total letters do I have though? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine total letters. So I have to do nine factorial divided by four factorial times two factorial times two factorial. If we put all this in the calculator, I showed y'all how yesterday. I'll just reiterate, make sure you put, either put the bottom in parentheses, the whole bottom, or you do control divide. If you're hearing this and you're like, huh? Go back and watch yesterday's video. It's in there, I promise. So put it in the calculator, you get 3,000. 780 ways. Unique ways, I should say. Okay, so there are some notes for day three. Stay tuned for the guided practice.